For the past few years, I've been dreaming of building a boat, a boat that does not exist yet. It's not a catamaran. Our catamaran should be shipping soon, and we will give you guys a huge update on that soon. I've been dreaming of building a smaller boat, something that could sail quickly and efficiently, something that could explore small harbors, bays, estuaries, and even bigger bodies of water in calmer conditions. I want to build something that could not only sail quickly and efficiently, but could also be paddled quickly and efficiently if there's no wind. Something that I can use for exercise and something that I could explore real quiet estuaries and wetlands and smaller bodies of water with. This will be a two-person boat, but could easily be paddled or sailed by just one person. This boat would be long, but modular, so it could be folded or taken apart for easy transport and storage. This boat will be a multi-hull, but not a modern multi-hull, more like a traditional Polynesian style multi-hull. So it'll be an outrigger canoe actually but not just a single outrigger canoe, a double outrigger canoe. This boat will have a dagger board for reasonable upwind sailing and a rudder for really good control. So over the past few years, as I'm coming up with all these ideas, what I would love to have in a small sailing paddling boat, I've been just scouring the internet, really paying attention to these styles of boats. And I just could not find anywhere something that fit exactly what I was coming up with in my head. So I attempted to draw some of my ideas out on paper and I have the drawing level of about a first grader. So because of that, I did my very best to recall all of the AutoCAD skills that I learned in high school and I applied them to a trial version of another program called Rhinoceros 3D. Many boat designers use this program in designing boats and my ideas translated a little bit better into this program, but I knew I still lacked the knowledge of like critical boat design elements and how to apply them into this program and how to design something to look aesthetically pleasing, even though I kind of knew what I wanted in my head. So a few years ago, our friends at Waterlust actually introduced us to a company called Chesapeake Lightcraft. And at the time, Waterlust had just finished building a pair of Waterlust canoes, a new model that Chesapeake Lightcraft has out. A Waterlust canoe is a small lapstrake sailing canoe with great sailing characteristics, but also a Hobie Mirage drive, a Hobie pedal drive for when the wind died. And they just introduced us at the time because they thought that we would get along great with Chesapeake Lightcraft and maybe one day we'd build one of their boats and we could do some sort of collaboration. This was years ago. So we started a conversation with CLC and we just kind of kept a relationship open. And at the time we were still cruising on our catamaran adrenaline. So we really didn't have the time or opportunity to do anything with them. But maybe a year or so after the origination of my idea, I brought the idea to Chesapeake Lightcraft just to see if they'd be interested in something like that. So we started the conversation of designing this double outrigger, traditional looking sailing paddling canoe. I think the first thing I heard was outrigger canoe, which is like I'm on it. So I think you'd already said, well, we, can, we can take the bows off the ends and that gives us a 12 foot center section and then two four foot ends. Um, that gives us a 20 foot outrigger and up at, by the time you get up to around 20 feet, you can really do fun things. I mean, you're not so constrained by um, payload and and waterline length. And um, so I was, I was thrilled. And for a few years, we talked about this, but our schedules and priorities didn't quite line up for us to be able to do anything together. But this year, this year, our schedules and priorities and open time are lining up and we began to plan this project together. You should know that Chesapeake Lightcraft specializes in designing, building, and selling small wooden boat kits. They offer over 100 different boat kits, ranging from canoes and kayaks to paddle boards, to many types of rowboats and small sailboats. They even have a kit for a wood teardrop style camper. Most of their kits were designed to be built by beginner to intermediate builders. You can buy just the plans and source the materials yourself, or you can buy the whole kit, which comes with CNC cutouts of all the components you need, plus the fiberglass, epoxy, and hardware. Chesapeake Lightcraft has shipped over 40,000 boat kits since 1994. In addition to their kits and plans, Chesapeake Lightcraft also offers build your own classes. This year they have over 30 week long classes in five different locations on both coasts of the US. There will be a link in the description to CLC so you can find out more about them if you're interested in any of these things. So I shared my ideas and my elementary drawings with John and his design team at Chesapeake Lightcraft and they were like, eh, this is cute. Let us handle the design from here. So after a few weeks of waiting, John and his team came out with some preliminary drawings and I was so relieved to see that they were exactly in line with what I had been thinking from the beginning for a boat like this. And I was really excited. Um, 
because we could because it's going to be an outrigger in this case with two outriggers, um, making it a trimaran. I, I was really excited because we could make it very skinny, you know, and you know, I, it was, was going to be a really slippery, easy to drive hull, which you know makes me look like a hero because basically whatever kind of sail rig you put on it, it's going to just sail like an ice boat or something like that. Let me first just say that there are boats out there that have similar features or the same features of exactly what I was thinking for this boat, but none of them all together. Firstly, there are small trimarans, but those are strictly for sailing. They wouldn't paddle very well, and they aren't quite the look that I had in mind either. There are also paddling outrigger canoes out there and they paddle super fast, but they would take a huge amount of modification to be able to make them sail even reasonably well and hold up to that sailing. And there are a whole bunch of boats in between. So one of the closest things I could find to what I had in mind was a Hobie Tandem Island. Hobie Tandem Island is like a trimaran kayak type thing. It sails and it paddles and pedals and they're incredibly functional. People really love them. But I feel like there's still a bit of performance left on the table with something like that. And still, it's not quite the style that I had in mind. Then there are the Holopuni canoes, which look incredible with really traditional island style, but they're way bigger than what would be practical for us. You know, you mentioned this really early on as an inspiration, and it is, you know, it was like, okay, cool, that looks like fun. What this has, skinny hull, um, quite a lot of freeboard, you know, compared to what you're used to in a, something that you paddle. Um, skinny, um, easily driven, um, but very um, convex lines. You know what I mean? So like, you know, the, the boat curves outward everywhere. Um, right. Where, you know, instead of like, you know, kayaks often have this very, you know, kind of a bottlenose sharp entry, which is great in smooth water um, and light air and things like that. But like in the in this photo um, from Holopony's website, it, it, you know, that wouldn't work in this situation. You can see really that this is, um, you know, there's a lot of volume in the bow. So that was um, something that was that was easy and logical to do. And it was still, the boat was still so skinny that it didn't, it wasn't gonna cramp your form whether you were um, paddling or pedaling um, with your Mirage Drive. John nailed the style we were looking for. And also seemingly the balance, uh, the ideal balance for us at least, between sailability and paddling performance. It all depends on the engine, you know, the easy way to, to, to put it, whether it's literally an engine or whether it's a sail or whether it's a human engine. There's not a lot of, you're not putting out a lot of horsepower um, paddling with a canoe paddle, say, or even with a Mirage drive, as, as miraculous as they are. So you want a very, very easily driven hull and, and all things being equal, if you have a fairly fine entry within some limits, then at the you'll use less power, less power is needed to get the, the boat moving at a good speed. Um, as you start to pile on the horsepower though, um, then boats with fine entries and um, and fine sterns for that matter, um, start to, to just in static conditions, they're gonna kind of dig up deep balanced stern wave, which is slow. Um, but you know, when, when, you, when you turn on the power, whether it's because you're, you know, you're, um, you're doing this you can definitely increase the potential speed and decrease the likelihood of doing a forward somersault um when you get to the bottom of the wave um, so yeah it's rare you know in my little niche of canoes kayaks small sailboats things like that it's pretty rare to have anything that's got the, the kind of speed potential where having very full ends this one is it's just kind of great because you're so skinny that kind of at the best of both worlds. If you were gonna be paddling all the time or 50% or of the time, we probably would have made the boat a little, a little more delicate uh, underwater. No boat is perfect. Everything is a compromise, but I felt like with a boat like this, with really narrow holes and a light boat, you could get a really, really nice balance between sailability and paddling performance. But John did point out something really important in, right in the beginning of the design process, which is, we really needed to define what kind of sailing performance we were looking for. You can remember, I think that the first question I asked you really early on in the design spiral was how fast you wanted to go. What would represent to you um, an interesting and entertaining speed under sail specifically? Um, and, you know, I, because if you're going to be up in the teens, you know, going 15 knots, which is not only kind of Hobie cat speed, but like well sailed, you know, well skippered Hobie cat kind of speed. Then you have to do a lot of things differently. 
because as the desired sailing performance increased, so does the sail area, so does the displacement of the main hull, but especially the amas, and with that, the strength of the whole boat together to be able to support all that load. And with that strength also comes weight. The, the primary thing really was the length uh, and storage limitations. We got to fit everything into 12 feet. So unless we made the amas, the outriggers or floats, however you like to say it, unless we made those um, demountable as well, then they're going to have to be 12 feet long. I mean, that's just, you know, that's that. Because if you want to um, be able to fold uh, them up without having to, um, you know, take them apart as well, then that settled that. So, all right, we've got 12 foot amas right now, and that's going to be your speed limit right there. So that's going to determine how much sail area we can put on this thing. And and, and that in turn is like, how strong do we need to build it? Because you know, quite a few multiples like this. And, you know, one of the frustrations is how quickly the loads build, the engineering loads build as you, you know, if we doubled your sail area, it would, it would really, you probably need these to be, these almost to probably be at least half again longer, if not the same length. Um, so uh, now that was, you know, once we decided, okay, we want to be able to pop up to 10 knots, in good condition, but you know, it's gonna be sailing into five to seven, eight, nine, which is, and that's great fun. Those are good fun speeds. So um, once I had that, then pretty much, you know, the volume of these guys, how much flotation we put into the omelets and uh, uh, how much sail area, and then how, how strong does all this have to be? Um, that all just sort of fell into place based on, on that. Uh, that was that was really how we got to this point. So we talked a bit about it and we decided that a good compromise would be shooting for a realistic sailing speed of up to around 10 knots pretty easily in decent conditions with a 90 square foot sail. After a few more weeks, John and his team ironed out the design in anticipation for our arrival to their shop in Annapolis, Maryland. It was decided that the hull would be formed out of strip plank cedar over male mold, the amas would be shaped out of foam, and the cross beams or akas would be a combination of wood and composite material. The final renderings of the boat look incredible and I cannot wait to start building this thing. We are going to Annapolis for about a month. We're gonna build this boat with Chesapeake Lightcraft and unfortunately, like we always do, even though we say we're not going to, we put ourselves on a strict deadline and you'll find out why soon enough. We're going to Annapolis.